From my previous video, we have completed the first vulnerable box of the Empire series. If you have not yet watched that video, click the i button to check out now. So, today we will be going to tackle the second one which is Empire Breakout. Empire Breakout is a vulnerable machine with difficulty level easy machine designed by i 64 and Empire Cybersecurity. Firstly, we have to download the zip file from here. On completion, launch virtual box. To add the vulnerable file, we have extracted that first. Now, click on new to create a new virtual machine. Now fill in the name, type, and version. Now browse the VMDK file from the extracted directory. On completion, check if the network adapter is set to host only adapter, or not. Once you are done with the settings up, let's start the instance VMs. Now, the instance is ready and we have got a terminal screen that prompts us to input the password. Enumeration Start the Kali machine, from where we are going to perform hacking. Our first step is to find out the target IP address using NetDiscover. From the scanning, we have discovered our target IP address, which is 192.168.56.108. We have discovered the IP address, so let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous NMAP tool where hyphen P hyphen is used to select all open ports and hyphen P is used to enable OS detection, version detection, script scanning, and traceroute and hyphen T is used to specify the time. From the nmap output, we have spotted five open ports. Port 80 TCP is running an HTTP service, which indicates that there might be a website running. Port 139 and 445 TCP are both sharing the same service and port 10,000 and 20,000 are both running HTTP services. Let's look at the contents ourselves. We can open a web browser of our choice and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. From the output, we have noticed that the running website is a default page of the Apache 2 HTTP service. Nothing seems to be of interest here, so, let's take a look at the content of the other two ports. The running web page, show us a login form. So, if we have valid credentials, then we can manage to get login access and a foothold on the server. Foothold From nmap scan, we have spotted two open ports running the NetBIOS SSN service. I have a write-up similar to this port, where I have managed to hack the server. If you have not read that one, then you can find out the link from the i button. Use SMB client and check if anonymous access is possible or not. If the SMB client prompts you to input a password just keep it blank and hit enter. From the output, we have noticed that the anonymous login is not possible. So let's enumerate the SMB shares using enum for Linux. It is basically a wrapper around the tools in the Samba package and makes it easy to quickly extract information from the target pertaining to SMB.
From the output, we identified a local user cyber, which might help us in terms of login with the webmin. Now we have a username, we only need the password to get the login access. If you take a look at the page source code of the Apache 2 Debian default page, then you will find out an encrypted message. The encrypted ciphertext seems to be in form of a brainfuck algorithm. Copy the code to a text editor. Open the browser and search for the brainfuck decoder. Paste here the ciphertext and execute it. On successful execution, you will be spotted a password. Now, we have a valid username and password, so let's try to log in with the web portal. The result displayed with login failed. Let's try to log in with the second web portal. The login was successful and displayed with the Userman application dashboard. Scroll down, and you will notice at the bottom left, we can see an icon for the command shell. Click on the icon, which will give us the shell access of the user. The user flag can be located in the current directory. As a result, we found the user.txt. Open this using the cat command. The shell looks odd, so, let's create an interactive shell. You can locate a command shell from the login tab. You can also perform the Linux commands from here. Let's create a reverse shell. You can find out the reverse shell cheat sheet on GitHub. Modify the listening host and listening port. Before running this script, you have turned on the netcat listener on the port that you mentioned. On execution, you got a reverse shell on the listening port. Let's make the reverse shell terminal more interactive. Since this is not the root user, let's identify further information about the target machine, which could be useful for gaining root access. Privilege Escalation Let's identify the rights and privileges of the current user by executing the sudo-l command. This error means the sudo command line utility is not installed. As we have no rights, so we cannot install it. Now, we can only way to escalate the privileges through the local procedure. As our instance running HTTP servers, so there might be some clue, so let's take a look at the files and directories of the var directory. Notice that there is a backups directory listed in this same directory, so take a look at the content of the backups directory. As we have no privilege to read the content of the old pass.bock file, if you take a look at the files and directories of the current directory previously, you will have noticed a tar file, which has permission to read, write and execute permissions. If you search on Google about this, then the search result displays the tar file. Tar is a computer software utility for collecting many files into one archive file, often referred to as a tarball, for distribution or backup purposes. Let's create an archive file called backup.tar. You can find out more about TAR from this article, I will provide the link on my blog. On successful execution, you notice a TAR archive in the current directory. Now extract the archive and take a look at the content within it.
From the output, we have spotted a password. So let's try to log into the root user. Finally, we have the root shell and verify using the whoami command. It has been proven that it is the root, simply change the directory to the root path to obtain the root flag. Congratulation, on completion of both capture the flags. If you have any doubts or queries related to this video then write me a comment in my comment section.